Welcome, welcome to Bronyville. This is episode 32, recorded on November 26th, 2011. I am your host, Apple Cider. Hello, everyone. Uh, great to have you listening in on the show. Uh, got a big, fun show ahead of us. We had an episode today of the mysterious Mare Duel. Uh, so we're going to be going through that. But first, let me go ahead and always introduce my uh, great co-host, uh, Chef Sandy. Hey, Chefers. Hello, hello. Good to have you on. Uh, our guests this episode are actually two guests we can, of the same thing, but they both uh, contribute to one thing. They are the Beatles bronies. Uh, we'll start with the first one listed here on the list here, which will be Pony Kenobi. Pony One Kenobi. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody, Pony? Howdy, howdy. Good to have you on the show. Uh, joining in also is Equestria Dude. Sup there, I like you a lot. Howdy, howdy. So we got these two guys on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about their Beatles melodies that they've uh, made and that you can find up on the YouTube. Uh, just kind of chat about that. We've got an episode. We've got news. We've got mail. We've got a whole bunch going on. But first, we've got to go through uh, four very important questions with these two that All we right. have to uh, roll through on every episode. Pony One Kenobi, we got to know favorite character and favorite episode. All right. Favorite character, I have to go with Fluttershy because you just cannot fight the Daw of Fluttershy. She's just adorable. And not to mention that she has an amazing singing voice that we've seen now on multiple occasions. Very true. All right. And favorite episode. This one's kind of interesting because uh, it's a newer episode. So let's go for it. Yes. My favorite episode right now is May the Best Pet Win because for one, we had the incredible song from Dash and uh, Fluttershy. And two, it was actually a, it was a very actually believable characterization of a uh, Rainbow Dash and how she acted throughout the episode was very believable and very created a very enjoyable episode. I even though it was sort of predictable that she would end up with the tortle, tortoise, it, it everything worked out pretty well. It just it, it it flowed well. It felt like a very good episode. Not to mention all the animation was also very stepped up in that episode. Yeah, had, had, definitely had a lot going on with the the yeah, multiple lots of going on multiple uh, kind of like. Weeding out the competition. Too mm-hmm. lame, too slow, not cool enough, and then, oh, Turtle, come on. Come on, Turtle. What are you doing? It's a tortoise. Uh, okay, and then the other two. So tell me, why do you love the show? Well, I really like the show because of the amazing <laughs> characters. And that's the main reason I really like it. Because after, like, the second or third episode, after discovering it, I'm like, I really like these characters. They're believable. They have, they make me want to feel for them. They they're just those characters have soul. That's what a friend of mine put it. They they make you want to feel for them and like them. Not to mention the excellent animation and music throughout the entire show. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so those who may know uh, that may know your love for the ponies, what do they think of it? Well, I have lots of uh, like hipster and internet savvy friends, so they accepted it pretty well. They uh, saw I've had converted a few of them. I've shown others that have not converted, but they understand that they understand why I like it. They will understand that it's a generally gen yeah a generally awesome show. Okay, and that should work. Yep, uh, pretty much sounds good. Uh, all right, thanks, Pony One Kenobi, and we'll move on to Equestria Dude. Equestria Dude, you got another uh, another uh, little background <coughs> pony here. So it, it sounds like just from our pre-show, you're very much on the background pony. So who, who's your favorite? So um, who cannot stand the love of a pink ribbon on a gray pony? So my favorite character is Octavia, purely because of the class and all the fandom that is related to her. Often, for example, in black and white, we see her as a sort of depressed musician. And not, I can't relate to it in that way because I'm usually very optimistic, but I am hugely engaged in every sort of fandom there is of her. So, great. And also, double bass, who does not love that? Or cello, people can't really seem to agree on what it is. Of course is the double bass. Why would it ever be the cello? Come on. Doesn't everybody, everybody knows it's the double bass. Well, there are arguments for each side. <laughs> yeah, true. 
I, up like I'm just yes. spreading it's a the... musical instrument played by a pony. I am simply it's a string instrument. The, I am simply spreading the hate, spreading the uh, <laughs> the. Uh, oh no, he didn't just say it's the cello. <laughs> yeah. The last you. It's a giant violin. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. She played the violin on and on uh on the Nightmare Night. You know, everybody. Oh, knows that, that was her sister. Oh, oh, okay. I see how we're playing that. Okay, uh, and really? then what's the uh, favorite episode you got, Equestria, dude? So again, all about the class and the classic. Um, I really like when the wrap up due to all about the morals there is in it. Uh, don't stress and stuff like that, and do what you what you're good at and not what you really want to do sometimes. And because she, Twilight is so frantic about wanting to help out and everyone, everything she does is usually not what she's good at. Um, and I can relate to that because I do a lot of random crap every now and then, but usually what it ends up is doing what I really like to do, which is obviously music. And that's, pretty much what people appreciate me for so and also of course song does not love that song i mean before i made a best pit win i'm pretty sure either that that one was like the most favorite one at least according to like the polls if i'm correct all right uh, let's see and let me get i uh, just guess just think back to the document okay and uh let's see so cool on it yeah actually i haven't heard winter wrap up in a while uh it's been kind of dominated by some of the other ones so but yeah, oh man, that, that that song probably got uh got stuck in everyone's head for the longest time. Yeah, yeah. that was like the first one to really get remixed super hard. When the wrap up. Oh no no no, we're not gonna. <laughs> All right. Winter wrap up. Winter wrap up. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, so why do you love the show so much, huh? Um, it's pretty simple as well, right there. Humor in My Little Pony is very innocent and very quirky and a throwback to, like, the old cartoons. Today, a lot of humor is usually really dark, what you see on TV. And I just really miss, like, the cute, innocent humor uh, that is of My Little Pony. So I really do enjoy just seeing something light and bright and cute and smiley. It makes me, also, ponies, it makes me really happy to watch it. Well, you can easily find any dark humor. You just gotta look at what's on the fanfic on the front page of well, EQB yeah, each day. <laughs> but and now we're talking about the show and not the fanon, because the fanon is entirely different, because everyone can entirely rip up whatever you create that's innocent, because humanity is cruel. Oh, ouch. Smack to us, down one. Smack to you. Uh, that's not a Google Plus one, that's a minus one. <laughs> okay, and uh, what about said love? Uh, why, why do you like the show so much, huh? Or actually, what do others think about uh, the fact you like this so much? So, um, pretty much everyone I've shown the thing ended up liking it as well. And everyone that says I'm weird because of it is usually people I don't like anyway. Um, so, do my friends are either accepting of it or they end up loving it as well. So, I'm having a delightful time being an open brony. I mean, I wear T-shirts with them at school, so. There you go. All right, well, it's cool. Uh, nice to have you both on. Uh, we've got a, kind of great, a lot of yeah. stuff that we could talk about. Got news. We'll go oh, yeah. over uh, kind of your uh, filk stuff. Ooh, and we even got questions. That's a that's a new one. Okay, sure. so, so let's go ahead and do that. To start off, though, uh, I need Sandy to help me out a little bit to talk about our sponsors. Hey, Sandy, uh, who, who's our sponsors again? The guys over at We Love Fine, they, uh, if you use our coupon code BRONYVILLE10, you get 10% off your purchase. And the design contest season two is over. And you can check out the winners. They're linked off that. Or you can just go to welovefine.com. We picked the Trixie shirt, and I'm sticking with it. It's a they good are, shirt. They are absolutely amazing. Right now, I'm wearing a Have a Derpy Day t-shirt. Uh, because I thought of being the spirit of getting into an interview, and it's a really comfy T-shirt, so I can only give them a big thumbs up. They make really good quality T-shirts. Mm -hmm. I have I actually over Thanksgiving wore the uh, Derpy Express Yourself T-shirt or the Derpy Muffins Express Yourself, and that was uh, that's my go-to. I also have the uh, Magneto Pony uh, shirt <laughs> as well, which is amazing. Yes, the uh, the Trixie shirt is nice. It's uh, I. Really kind of wished that uh, another one would have won a Nightmare Moon design. But we all can wish, uh, you know, 
they they chose they pro, they chose what they could, and you know, I will stick with it. I still think it's a great design. So, hey, me, me. Yeah, it was in our top five. So yeah. there, there you go. All right, so we got news time. So go check out We Love Fine uh, before we move to news. Uh, go do that, Bronyville Ten. Uh, I do know this is going to be a little bit late, but they do have a, uh, a Cyber Monday deal going on. I'll probably post something up on Monday. That way, every pony gets to, you know, try and sample that out. So, all right, we'll go ahead and move forward. News. Uh, so, Chef, we've got a lot going on here. Uh, Not as much as you would think. Oh, um, we don't. This week has been rather light, even though there are the usual five things of news. Okay. Um, the first thing on the list is Notch Likes Pony. Oh, He's Someone, a cool guy. Somebody asked Notch if he uh, is a fan, and he says, yes, I am a brony. Hooray. And then, no, he's just a liar. Boo! Uh, oh. Yeah, so, she's, so the, who- the second link, it's him going, I lied on the internet to become popular, but I want to be a brony. So, so explain to us, who the heck is Notch? Notch is this, this guy, he's a programmer. He made this game that some of you might have heard of about called Minecraft. I hear it's kind of big. Um, nope, never heard of it. Oh, okay. Sounds just interesting. Minecraft, just speak of. And uh, it was just some random one-off thing that I saw on on the net. I was like, oh, I'll link that to the news. <laughs> it's it's just Notch being Notch. I, I don't know. He says things. He says lots of things. He trolls. He sometimes gets in very big trouble for said things, he says. Yes. As I understand. Notch, hire, hire one of us to be your PR guy. Come on. He also said um, some bad stuff to, to Yogscast, didn't he? Yeah, well, we're not going to go into that because we're not a Yogscast show. We're a pony show. Um, And that's about it for that little piece of news. Okay. Hey, Notch, if you ever want to go ahead and move over, uh, may I suggest uh, just go ahead and watch some of it? Not like he can't find it on YouTube, huh? Huh? Yeah, like he's actually uh, listening uh, uh, to this. All right, go on. What do we got? Um, the next thing is there's Everfree Northwest. Woo. It's a thing. It surely is a thing. Really, it is. It's this. It was a teaser that was dropped on uh, Equestria Daily and Derpy Who's and all up in the IRC. And well, it's currently a whole bunch of nothing. With a silhouette of the Seattle of the Space Needle in Seattle, what it is, because I have insider information, Ooh. is a convention being planned for summer 2012 in Seattle. Ooh, three day convention. I know that much. And so, uh, so a full you know. con uh, hosted by uh, actually another individual who has been on our show, Roy G. Biv. Yep, he has himself a crew, it seems, and I wish them all the luck in the world. We'll see what happens. They want us to be there, Chef. I haven't been able to confirm because we have to figure it out, but we, we can look at that in the future. We they can, want us. We can do our best. Yep, we can see. that It is It is definitely for the summer summertime, a little bit later in, in the year, uh, but, but we can see. Hey, summertime in Seattle is really nice. Um and that's about it. I'm sure there'll be more information coming up soon. And uh, if we can be there for it, we'll do our best. We'll do our best to be there. Onward! Onward! Onward. Moving on. Jerby Hoos has further news. Well, I saw this off somewhere else. But apparently there is now an official Zazzle store for My Little Pony. And this is decidedly girly girl shirts. Um, they also have some of the classic My Little Pony. They have some official Luna stuff. They have, uh, basically they have some new vectors they're using in some of their stuff, like Princess Celestia binders and stuff. Uh, as it is, Zazzle, it is extremely expensive, as in, like, a binder with Celestia on it. It's a very nice, very nice vector. Is uh, about 19 bucks. But if you really want to have yourself a My Little Pony binder for class or whatever, you can put your uh, 12-step paperwork in there, I don't know, and uh, have yourself a coy-looking Celestia for... It's official. Yeah, it's nice. It's It's, it's nice. You really like its mane. 
Yeah, it's, I really <laughs> like its main. It's nice. It's yeah, well, big. you know, it's it's a thing. Well, and some and some people brought up some interesting points about it. Uh, one one thing is this: it's kind of funny of just like, okay, first Hasbro started up a Zazzle store, which is kind of strange considering the fact that people have made their own independent little Zazzle stores, and then it's just like, oh, hey, we could make a Zazzle store. Um, well, they have basically you can like put your name on it, or you can get a Luna shirt that's got, you know, a. Apparently, a season one vector of Luna without the uh, sparkle main, and some of these you can put like your name on them or something. But again, these are little girl shirts. Um, and nobody that listens to this, short of a parent with kids, is going to be able to buy these and wear it. By the way, if you are a parent listening to this with kids, I'd love to hear you because that would be great to know that there's actually uh that actually happens. I think it's all just bronies actually just listening in. Well, either way, there's a lot of them. The, uh, so, uh, well, I, I just wanted to add one more note to this because it was kind of an interesting conversation I had. Somebody, uh, actually, we were talking about the Zazzle store, and they were afraid that they were just like, well, you know, Hasbro set up this Zazzle store. Are they going to just, you know, do away or not do the stuff we love fine anymore because they've got their own selling venture? And my take on it was, the Zazzle store is, as you said, for, hi, I need to buy something for my niece. She's six years old. Here's a shirt with Pinkie Pie on it that has her yeah. name printed on it. The Zazzle stuff is rainbow glasses, you know, just like all the crazy meme stuff that we do. Is It's it's all just feeding that zeitgeist. Magnet pony. Yeah, magnet pony. There's a perfect example. Magnet. There's a pony for that, yeah. Exactly. There is a decidedly different um, market for the Zazzle. It's for, like you said, my niece needs a shirt, my daughter needs a shirt. The Wheel of Fine is, you know, your generic nerd. We want to, I would like to wear... You know, My Little Pony or Adventure Time or whatever else that they have. Apparently they have Samurai Jack shirts. That's news to me. Uh, there's one Samurai Jack shirt. Don't worry now. Um, but yeah, that's it's not going to cut into anything. It's just they have another option to get very cutesy stuff. Don't do it, Hasbro. Don't take them down. Occupy Hasbro. All right, moving on. Next. Oh, oh, AC. You make me so tired sometimes. Uh, okay. And I'm the sick one this week, so there. I yes. make you tired and I can still bring it. Moving on. Um, this is actually, this is actually news, in a way. Uh, the Hub used some fan art in its Naughty or Nice advertising commercial. Specifically, the artist uh, going by Briskby, otherwise known as Rose, um, she drew a Discord pick after the end of episode one of season two, and it got grabbed and used in the ad. More or less inadvertently, they were probably just like, eh, Discord, Discord, oh, this looks good, and grabbed it and put it in the ad. So... The artist, thankfully, has been very gracious. They're like, oh my god, they use our stuff. I'm so happy. And previously, you know, other period before that, you know, Wheel of Fine had done the uh, 20% cooler vector that they'd accidentally stole. That got resolved. Oops. But uh, the artist in question, you know, she's quite happy with it being used. I mean, she's getting her art used up by the channel that airs the show. So she's pretty happy about it, and that's a good thing. Yeah, get this previewer stuff on a TV show. Hey, it's Discord. I, I just do have to wonder if somebody was just like, do we have any pictures of Discord? Ah, uh, just go to DeviantArt. They've got some there. Yep. Just just search for Discord, the the dragon. I don't know. That, that's the other thing of just like, they call Discord a dragon. It. Is he a dragon? I don't. He's a uh, some he's draconicus. Draconicus. Some dragon. yeah. Dra draconicus. Draconicus. Yes. He's a he's a, a Q in there. He's, he's a he's like a he's a Q. He's a Q. That's that's what Discord is. Discord <laughs> the Q. All right. So there we go. Artwork being used. Next onward. 
Andrea. Yes, this one is uh, more of a, if you're interested, sort of thing. Not so much news that the guys over at Derpy Hooves have gone through and transcribed the Q&A session from Andrea Libman that occurred at FushiCon here uh, a couple weeks ago. And it's 44 minutes worth of audio that they transcribed the text. And uh, AC, you and I are going to have to go over these questions and try to find other ones so that we don't, you know, ask stuff that's already been answered. Step on somebody else's hooves. Well, there, there's a lot of, like, repeat of, like, how did you start, you know, uh, how is it, like, working and, you know, it, just doing the interviews. There's that one groan-worthy question midway through. God! <laughs> Why? Okay. But, um... Sorry, I had to get that out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's a lot of it. Um, she did say that, you know, with this, it was her first time um, going in. And some of her answers are a little short. I hope that when we do an interview, we can uh, we can poke some more out of her and just be like, come on, Andrea, give us the dirt. Like, how is it working with Tara Strong? And she's Good. Like, I, I don't work with her, but I recorded her once and she was nice. Okay. So there you go. If you really want to save your ears 44 minutes and just read through the answers, then uh, there you go. Efficiency is good. Uh, yeah, that's about it for the news this week. There wasn't a ton. And hopefully I haven't bored anybody to tears yet. Uh, we need more drama. Somebody, need more. somebody start up drama somewhere. We well, need... that's the thing. It's like there's been drama. It's just not funny related. So uh. I'm going to bring it up. Why can't we get Yogcast yeah, mad be careful at us? what you wish Come for. On. Because we have the Russian thing going on right now. Because we like Yogcast. <laughs> They're funny guys. Is, is, they is, are. Is Russia mad at us now? Oh god. They are pointing missiles at America. Oh, not again. What did we do? I think we pointed ours at them. Oh, why we do that? I don't know. Uh, yes. Happiness to, just fails to current today. events. Yes. Uh and that's another reason why I like ponies. They are a happy show, and the world's kind of crap. Nobody <laughs> has ever pointed intercontinental missiles cruel. at Everfree. Everfree for There, there hasn't been missiles. the Everfree missile crisis. <laughs> uh, the, the Bay of uh, Boggy Bottom Bog. <laughs> uh, the Bay of Apples incident. Bay of Apples, there you go, I like that one. But Rainbow Dash did create a mushroom cloud. Uh, you know, rainbow nuclear rainbow weapon testing. The apple you know, that's, that's prohibited. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the listeners. There you yep, go. There we go. We've just uh, lost half of them right there. Moving on. <laughs> to I'm, gl- I'm, glad I, <laughs> I'm glad we could grim up our own show just a little bit, <laughs> imbuing real life things. Yes, just so you know, Equestria Dude loves it for its lighthearted tone. <laughs> oh, God. Apple Shima. There you go. All right, so move on. We've got fanfics. We've got books to talk about, which is totally different than the weirdness we were just going through. So, oh, not uh, really. <laughs> every week we, uh, we try and give you a little bit of fic to read. Um, I decided to do something a little bit different, mainly because I hadn't had any time to do it, but I would suggest checking out the Equestrian Inquirers. They pop up on uh, Equestria Daily every few weeks, and uh, I love the one for last week's, which title is, Oh Great, Rainbow Dash Now Has a Pet That Is Basically a Rock She Can Drop on Every Pony. And it's just everybody going like, yeah, it was great before, but she would just throw rocks and things, but now she's just got this missile that she can throw at people and it will home. It's great. Now we got to watch out for things. It's uh it's it's I think it's a pretty funny read. I like it's it's very nice and sarcastic, which I like some sarcasm. All right, chef, what do you got? I bet you do. I do. Or do I, huh? Maybe. Okay. Okay, so this one hold on to your butts. Okay. Is the Adventures of Sherlock Pones. <laughs> oh. Oh, them names. Them by names. writer. And, and by writer. I don't think they put their name to this by unless writer. they just go by writer. I am writer. I do rights. Keywords good. <laughs> um, oh, the it's, pot. It's Sherlock Holmes, Ponified. I thought it was pretty clever. Interesting. 
It's uh, only about 30,000 words for the whole thing so far. It's incomplete and is rated T for teen. That is to imply T not. T. <laughs> not R or X. <laughs> the link goes to film fiction. Tread lightly there. For there are scary, scary things in the darkness. What's in this alleyway? Oh, God! Oh, <laughs> oh sweet Celestia! Uh, all right, so Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes, yeah, Skus, Skurskops, Groans, something like that. Shallop Scones, there you go. So, Jelly and Scones, Adventures of Jelly and Scones. All right, check out that fic, Pony. Save us. What we got? Yes. Unlike a few of your previous guests, you guys have a lot of previous guests haven't been reading much fanfic. Unlike, la, la, la. Uh, Unlike myself, uh, right, right, I read right, a ton right, of fanfic. Right. Fanfic, fanfic. I read. I'm really a big fan of the fanfic. So one of my favorites that I'm reading through right now is "The End of Ponies" by uh, Short Skirts and, and Explosions. You are a bad person. Like, this is is a brilliant fic. It's essentially a sad, sh- sad fic, sad fic, dark fic. Not grim, dark, just dark and sad. Basically, there is one pony left after a gigantic cataclysm that has killed every pony. So basically, th- destroyed the sun and moon, the Equestria is just a barren, ash-filled wasteland, and she is the last one. But then she finds something. She finds out on a way to go back in time and meet the main six and try and discover what happened. Okay. In- intriguing. Intriguing. I will give it that. Just like you don't even know her name until chapter four, but you're crying by the end of chapter two. The End of Ponies by Short Skirts and Explosions. All right, let me go ahead and make sure I can put this link inside of here. Da, 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 copy link. So they got that. All right, and what's the second one you got attached? I got another one because I read anything with the tags Scootaloo and Sad because oh. just... <laughs> you are cruel. You are absolutely downright cruel. Oh. Unless it's Scootaloo. You feed on negative need... emotions. I don't care. <laughs> Scoot abuse, but it's just that if it's Scootaloo and sad, it's always very touching. So one of my favorites I can't has been really fly. Ooh. <laughs> I I die this, this, in the cold. You know what? Scootaloo is almost like a just a, a sad fic waiting to go. Can't fly. Always interested in, in uh, Rainbow Dash, and just keeps getting pushed aside. Yeah. Being called, hey, squirt. You know, that's all. That's all it is to her. She right. is abused Just, by the fandom. Uh, all right, keep going. What, so explain to this terrible thing you like. All right, this one's actually, it starts out really light. It's um Transcendence by, hang on, I'm trying to load the page. Loading page, come on. Transcendence by Corgero. 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 By a name. Keep going. So basically, it starts when Scootaloo moves to Ponyville and meets first meets Rainbow Dash. And... Things go well for her until a pivotal moment in her life causes her hopes and dreams to come crashing down around her. No, she does not break her wings. But <laughs> it's still pretty bad, and it gets really sad. But it's okay. It's a really touching. I'm thing. going. Really to, I'm going to repeat the first uh, the first comment on this. If this is scoot abuse, I will run screaming into the night. <laughs> <laughs> I just want. Uh, I just want to echo this that sentiment. It is not good abuse. All right, much. Okay, Equestria, you got you've got to redeem because we got yeah. some sad up above you. We've I'm got, sorry. I, there are all like Pony One is absolutely terrifying when it comes to reading fanfic. Whenever we discuss, so on the other hand, I really the story name might sound like it's sad or grimdark because the name is Time Lords and Terror. Um, but it is a crossover with Doctor Who, um, and I suggest everyone, if you're a Doctor Who fan, or if you're, not, especially if you're not a Doctor Who fan, this is a very great way to start watching Doctor Who. I began watching Doctor Who uh, by reading this fanfic, and the characterization is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the character writing uh, and the amount of pages he gives this author, which is named Hephaestus or something like that. I can't yeah, pronounce the name is really good at describing details and the quirky humor he takes from both the show from Doctor Who and My Little Pony is a perfect balance. Practically, 
if any of you are a Doctor Who fan, Twilight gets absolutely the best with the amount of knowledge she has. Mm-hmm. So it's really, really fun, fun to, to read. So would you say you're a, a big, big into the Doctor Who's fan fictions that are out there? I've, like, earlier today I read Traveler, which I also thought was really amazing, uh, and number 12, so... So what? Yeah. Are, so what are your? Feel, have you read any of the ones that have Derpy as the uh, as the um, companion? Actually, not because mm-hmm. what I really do enjoy of the Doctor Who is when he meets the main six. Usually, their reactions are always different comparing to each and every author. Some people have like where they are really surprised. Some of where they go offensive. Some of them will just understand immediately, which I think is really boring. But every single person, as long as they meet the main six, there's always different ways. And I really do enjoy whenever Dr. Who uh, confuses the crap out of every single person he's around. Yeah, how many, how many times per... Uh, <laughs> there's at least a few times for books where it's just like, yes, yes, it's bigger on the inside. Let's keep going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? Yeah. So. The first is- just captures the Doctor, like, incredibly well in Time Lords of Terror and its sequel. Yeah, isn't the Dragon Minds thing, right? Mines, Dragon, Dragon, Mines, Dragon, of, Mines of Dragon Mountain. I recommended Mines that one a few weeks ago. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. You know what? It all, those all sound good. I think what I'm going to have to do next week, just based off of all this, is I'm going to have to find a Scooter Love thick. Just, just yeah. I, I'm still, I'm still reeling from the the scooter sad. I need some scooter love, so I'm gonna have to do that for next week. There's a lot of art with the scooter love, but there isn't actually a lot of fanon with scooter love. There isn't fan- any good scooter love fix. <laughs> I'd read them, but there isn't any. Uh, Lasted. All right, start writing. He, we got writers. You writers, start writing. You can start reading thing. Transcendence and then stop around chapter eight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and everything's good. Don't, and then don't. they die. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and then it's the end of ponies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, just moving them all together. Okay, so let's go ahead. Those are all of our fanfic suggestions. You should probably go ahead and uh, check those out. Uh, quick Starry Night update. It appears that she's going to sleep. Uh, <laughs> you're cuddled up to a pillow with a blanket on you. Oh, okay. All right, so that's your uh, Starry Night update. Um, okay, so now it's about time for uh, topic time. So we've got uh, these two bronies on to talk about uh, their little filk project that they have. So uh, let, let me just, we'll take this at the very basic. So, uh, so like, you do some stuff on you, YouTube. What is it, really? Mm-hmm. Well, basically, we take Beatles songs and rewrite the lyrics to be about ponies. And then we cover this, and for most, most recently, we've been covering the songs completely, and then we post them all on YouTube. That's yeah, the bare bones of it all. Yeah, we pretty much like we do all. And the start, we didn't have like our own instrumentals, but really quickly, we decided that we should begin doing our own music with our own instruments and whatnot. So we have a delightful time playing the music as well as much as creating it. Okay, so why exactly did y'all pick the Beatles of all bands? Um, mm. Do you want to go ahead? I'll you do take it, it easy. Because um, I was actually approaching this fret on PonyChan.net, which Pony1 had created. So I'm a big Beatles fan, obviously. Um, and we actually, pretty much, he just said, you know what, I want to do some music. And a lot of people just began, like, saying, you know what, we'll do these one songs, but then we want to do something else. And then Pony1 was pretty much like, no, we'll do more Beatles. And... <laughs> From there on, we just created our small little team of how many are we? Eight, eight people now? Something like that. We're, we got we got, gathered a lot of people. Yeah, um, and it, it only started out as just like we wanted to do like one album, like ten songs, and then we'd go our separate ways or do another band or something. But yeah. no, we just kept going. But the thing is that a lot of people actually asked us to do other songs, especially Let's Settle in. Due to the high vocals like Kate uh, Ossoff and uh, Pony One Kenobi have, but I just think that sticking with the Beatles stays true to so the kind of fan base that we've got, or like keep doing the same kind of music. Okay, because I mean, I have you've 
I have three of your albums. The Sergeant Pinky's Lonely Who's Club Band's Blank Album and Apple Road. That's all of your stuff that I have. I'm not sure if you've done any further. Basically because yeah. the guy that was doing all the Pony Chan music updates each week has kind of stopped. And it's like, oh god, I have to find the music now. Um, yeah, we need to put together another mass yeah. download. But the thing is, we've, we've taken done- a lot... Go ahead. The thing is, we've done a lot of different songs from different albums as of late, so we should probably make a mashup album next, I think. Yeah, yeah I'm also waiting on some album art, but we've, got, we've done like 20 more songs. We've hit, we just yeah. now hit 50 songs. Well, that's impressive, because uh, there are quite a, there. I mean, of the three I have, there are some songs there that I really quite like. Um, Little Octavia, Scootaloo, uh, Rarity. There's, I know that's like Hey Spike. It's pretty good. Um, Derpy's Iron Anvil. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, I, I was going through the list going like, all right, there's got to have a Maxwell Silver Hammer uh, cover. And yep, there it is. Clang, clang, Derpy's Iron Anvil. Yeah. That was it, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's very weird because Filk music has been around forever. I mean, people were writing parody songs, you know, for like, I'm sure for Star Trek and stuff. Here, quickly, to the Wikipedias, for I say stuff that I shouldn't. Quickly, types and things. But I, I've, I've noticed recently, let's see, we've got, a, we've got yes. a recent one that just got put out as He's a Tortoise. Right? Yes. Yeah, a cover of uh, She's a Woman. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the ballad of Twilight Sparkle. I actually probably will use that as the, uh, as the outro. Uh, for this week, because I really liked the it, it. It had a nice, like, full band feel to it. I, I really dug that. Yes. The, yeah, that uh, cool. So, according to Wikipedia, Filk is a musical culture genre community tied to science fiction fantasy fandom as a type of fan labor. The genre has been active since the early 50s and played primarily since the 70s. Yay! If you go to the any term- sci fi convention, there's people with drums and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, um, Voltaire has done an, you know, did a short album, Band on Vulcan. Uh, a lot of bands, I mean, Weird Al is filk. It's taking a song and rewriting it. You take that back! <laughs> I perform this way! Uh, Great song. Uh, I'm sorry, what was what was that, AC? You take that back! He's a, he's a talented artist! He is a talented artist, and he's been doing music forever. He's a great artist. He's still he's technically... Filk. Uh, uh, don't use that. Well, all right, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'm so world. hard to work with sometimes. You really are. I mean, you have you haven't even learned a new word this week. Uh, I don't even. Um, I don't. Sometimes I don't need to, uh, Chef. Eh, things. I got cold. Keep going. All right. So let me. Well, I'll go. I'll do the next question. So. So you've got all these, you've got the Beatles songs, you've got some of the other stuff you're working on. So, like, how how's the fans been for you? How 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 did that kind of build for you, and how have you uh, ended up working with uh, the people following your stuff? Yeah, the fan reaction has been, like, very, very positive. We, I had started putting some of the videos on YouTube just to keep them there, and then I would, like, post, I sent an email to, like, Seth over at Equestria Daily once we had a few good songs up, but people found it. And then we just, it just started growing from there. So I, st- I, had, I, had, we already had like 10 songs done before I started putting them on YouTube. So then, then I put three or four of them on and then everyone just rushes in. And before like a couple months, we have over a thousand subscribers. Yeah. It's pretty like right now we have about 120,000 total views on our, all our songs. And we even got one of them on the meme base or Dear Derpy. Ended meme up base. on the meme base. Sorry, um, so reception has been absolutely brilliant. Um, we had a few. Also, there's always the haters. There goes slightly down and next that we're off key or something like that. Yeah, but, but even though the, the even the Brony haters admit that some of the covers are good. Like one of the yeah. comments on um, Revolution is that like this sounds exactly like the Beatles, but that's all I'm giving you. <laughs> yeah. So it's been great. Really great. And do the fans help out with uh, a little bit of the song suggestions? Uh, will you know they we come ha- to you and they'll they'll give you something and just like yeah, you know that actually seems like it'd work. Yeah, like early on, at least a few of our songs, like the 
names for inspiration was actually done by some of the fans. And also, when you go onto our page, you can ask for like songs you want to do, and if you have any ideas how to do them. So our fans usually can have a huge impact on how we'll do our songs, as long as the voice is strong enough. Yeah, we do read all of those suggestions. So if you really want us to do a song, post it in our on our channel. Like, which song should we redo? We read all of those, and they go into what we do next. And we squee with glee. <laughs> yes. Glee, you say? Glee. Not like the TV show, just actual glee. Just oh, okay. honest, direct glee. No auto-tuning 15-year-olds for this one. No, please no, don't. No, come on, come on, let's be honest. Auto-tuning 27-year-olds. <laughs> None <laughs> of never. those people are in high school. Ever. Ugh. They're all auto-tuned, I don't care. Uh, I'm just gonna hate. I'm gonna hate. Alright. It's okay. We got Daniel Ingram to see one of our things. He yeah. commented on his Facebook. Because I, I noticed that um, the Find a Pet song was, had a very, very, um, uh, what's it called? Similar like, tune form. Yeah, similar like progression to Penny Lane. So I re rearranged the song a bit and sang Penny Lane along to the uh, instrumental of May the Best Pet Win song. Mm. Find, find a Pet, that's the song. And and he he went oh or what was what was the yeah, exact uh, like, what did he say? This is brilliant. Oh he yeah, did? <laughs> Lol, yeah this is really great. Daniel Ingram just going around lolling at things. LOL, <laughs> I like arts. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so uh, let's see where where did the document go? I seem to have lost it in my window. Chef, right we're doing a sh we're doing a show, Chef. I'm professional. I think I accidentally closed All my. Right. You you get the last page. one. I'll do this one. Okay, so what you got? What do you guys got in the future? Where you? What are you looking for uh, music wise coming up? Well, we have recently been approached by one Pony Toast to try and do a uh, Christmas song for his for an album he's trying to put together of Brony Carol's Christmas songs. So we're working on that. Not exactly going to reveal which post Beatles Christmas song we're going to do, but we also have a open Google Doc. If you find our Fred on the Pony Chan, where you can literally go in and watch any of our work in progression, at least lyric thing wise. So anyone can go in there and look at it. Um, and we have what a good ten songs we haven't done yet that we got down on paper. Yeah, we have tons of lyrics that we need to do. <laughs> yeah. We're so beyond schedule. Hmm. And, well, that, that, and now all of a sudden... It, it, or go ahead. It starts out that I can't write lyrics. That's half the reason I posted on the thread. Like, I need some help writing lyrics. I can do music, but... I have the lyric writing ability of Scootaloo, so I need help. <laughs> Digestia. Yes. yes. You, yeah. try and, you try and put that lyric Unless down. I get hit with brilliance like I did was sitting in the parking lot thinking of little Octavia. Yeah. <laughs> Just sitting in the parking lot at work. It's like uh, da, 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 I went a rigby Octavia. I just read that the fanfic black and white. I was like, oh, she's like a sad pony in that. Like, wait a minute. And then it just came to me and I wrote it all down. I like posted it in the thread via my phone. <laughs> Like, I was hit by a muse. We must we, do this. We are very amateur based, but we absolutely love everyone. Like, er, like all our guys really are great whenever we talk privately, and we just have a great time actually doing what we do. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right, Chef. Uh, hit that last one for me. So, uh, where can we find your stuff? All right, you can find our stuff in two places. Most of it, in fact, all of it, is on YouTube, on user, YouTube user Beetlebrony. You can find us there. There you can find all our songs. Nearly all of them have download links. If they don't, check on the All You Need Is Friends video. They, should, they have a mass download for all the songs before that in the description of All You Need Is Friends. Most of the songs after that have a download link. It sounds like there's a uh, there's another hiding place 
That's, that's the first place to go. Where's the other the one? The second place to go is Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Hang on, let me find out exactly what it is. <laughs> Yay! Well, Bandcamp. Uh, where is the uh, Beetlebrony.bandcamp.com. You can find some of our songs. I have Apple Road and Sergeant Mickey's Lonely Hoof Club Band uploaded there. I have yet to get the rest of our songs there. I really need to do that at some point. Yeah. Also, there is actually two other places you can come in contact with us if you need to. The one is, of course, PonyChan.net, but usually we also tend to hang out on the Celestia Radio uh, IRC chat, so if you want to go and have a talk with us about a song, you can usually find us there. I occasionally harass around there. Yeah. <laughs> knock, knock, hey, what's yeah, going Celestia on? Celestia Radio guys are cool. They really like us. All right, that's cool. You a bit oh. selfish, though. <laughs> Hey, wait a second. All right, well, that sounds good. So uh, go check out their stuff, their YouTube channel, uh, everything with their filk, whatever that means. <laughs> Who knows? It's lost in time. Oh, uh, we all pony things. All right, well, we need to go ahead and move forward. Let me go ahead and ty- type in here that it's episode time. Episode time! So we got to <laughs> talk about, what was it, S2E8. Eight. There we go. Of this, the mysterious mm. Mary Duell. It was an episode. Yay. It was an episode. It was not bad. It was not totally exceptional either. I think the thing is that all the previous, all the previous thing we had lately is absolutely amazing. So this one hit a bit low. So it was still really great, but just a bit low compared to what we've had previously. Yes. So, I'm just going to come out and say that Dash, she's really... She's kind of slipping. The characterization uh-huh. in the last couple episodes... What? She, she's, uh, she, she's on the verge of not being my favorite pony oh. anymore! Oh! Oh! oh, oh Scandal! Oh, oh happy day! Oh, I, I mean, oh no! <laughs> Rainbow uh-huh. Dash, you gotta step it up! Oh. Uh, so this episode was actually the first episode from one of the new writers. Um, this was their first first thing. Meriwether Williams. Meriwether Williams. Yep. And she, uh, Meriwether Williams has written quite a few things. Um, she wrote for Camp Laszlo. She worked, worked for Spongebob. Back in 99, she was writing stuff for Adventure Time, uh, The Wild Thornberries, Angry Beavers, Rugrats, and Aw Real Monsters as Miscellaneous Crew and as a writer for Johnny Test, as well as the aforementioned shows, Good Time Max, The Ape, Fool's Gold, and something called Free for All. So she is a writer that should know her stuff. Yeah. Um, it's and again, she does and, know her stuff. She wrote yeah. for SpongeBob at Camp Lazlo, which is probably just a teensy bit different than Ponies. So yeah, she, I looked back, and she's like written like all of my favorite SpongeBob episodes. <laughs> like, um, again, she's not. It was not a bad episode. It's just all we had before. We just recently had yeah. an episode with a song in it, with an absolutely amazing song. Um, and before that, we had Luna, which everyone really enjoys as well. And then we had Discord and Listen Zero, which is like a huge streak of everyone gets what they want. Don't forget Sister Hooves. And Sister Hooves, of course. You know, who doesn't love Rarity? Mm-hmm. I don't. I mean, it was, it was a, it was a, it's, it's an episode. Um, I, I have to say, all right, I think there's no pony here that doesn't know that Dash can sometimes get on my nerves. Uh, and the first eight minutes were crazy. Like, just, you loved it. just, oh, just sitting there going, like, how much of herself am I going to hear? Is this, it, I know that there's a turning point. There's got to be a turning point. Also, I want to state, why is there a hill in the middle of the town that launches <laughs> out into a chasm? There are way too many there cliffs. There are always baby carriages and buses rolling down this hill. <laughs> What is up with that? There's just this is a random hill of just like, come on. <clears throat> yeah. We're going to take, uh, where should we go? Uh, you know, we could take a shortcut if we go down, uh, you know, death defying hill. All right. Well, oh, God. How'd that happen? 
Only was surprisingly dangerous. It is, especially this episode. It's just things oh. were breaking left and right. You gotta say, Equestria is just a dangerous place to be. You've got crazy town. You got towns built on the edges of cliffs. You've got massive eel monsters and quarries. You've got every forest, every forest, manacore, all that stuff. It's a pretty dangerous world out there. Um, so innocent. Indeed. Let's see. Just yeah, this, through. Oh, go ahead. The, they also have tanks and guillotines <laughs> and bullets. Yeah, ponies with slings. We can't wait to the Christmas episode where we get to hear about how a question was made. It's probably just made of, like, war. It's all about how Pinkie Pie gets her cutie mark. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, all, it's all about the autistic kid who looks in the snow globe. It's all, you know. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, God. please don't. No. <laughs> yes, we're, we're not going to have uh, a St. Elsewhere ending. <laughs> not allowed. Murder someone if they do. All she does is just sit there every day. No. All right. So let, let's go through the episode just a, just a little bit for the the interesting bits. All right. So let's see. There's the fan club at the beginning, which Scootaloo. Sco- tons of Scootaloo. Yon cats in the background. Yes, Yon cat. Yon Everyone's Nash. there. Snips and snails. Which, regardless of what I say, I have grown on snips and snails. I think they're cool. I'm just going to put this out there. Snips and snails have had more dialogue than Brayburn. At this point, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Never going to see him again. No one rolls in You know what? I'm just going to make Sethisto mad, and we're not going to see Trixie either. Oh, you heard it. All right. Oh, well, I half expected Snips to say that Twi- that yeah, that Trixie was the most awesome pony. <laughs> yeah, that has been amazing. It. It's like, by the way, Trixie. Yeah, that would have just continued it. Oh God, no. <laughs> oh God, imagine what would happen if Trixie was the mayor duel. Like, yeah. I could have just imagined just Sethisto's head just floating off into the sky. <laughs> yeah, just, the question would have been It would be Trixie Daily. <laughs> it w- like, it isn't every, like, six days out of the week. All right, oh. so let's see. Uh, Dash gets a big head of herself. Uh, Ghost Rider Spike. Uh, Spike and and that's the thing. It's like, Dash really was like... Oh God! I, I must. I must to be the center of attention. I have to be the center of attention. Everyone, pay attention to me, please. It's, it was just like, oh, I, I don't like this. Why also, are you being so bad, Dash? Also, the costume looks surprisingly like Darkwing Duck. Yes, the Darkwing Duck thing was uh, interesting. Amazing. So, how long did it take you guys to figure out that it was all? Of the, and here's the spoiler at the end: that it was pretty much all of them. Uh, <gasps> it was the all dam, of them? Oh my god. At the dam, right when uh, Twilight used her magic to like fix the dam, I was like, okay, that color only belongs to one. And I was like, screw this, and like spoil forward to the end. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like, all right, the, the construction side is just like, okay, that has to be Applejack. Like, it's just like, she's too good, That's she's too pinky. fast, she's too strong. That was like, pinky, though. No, that, oh yeah, that was Pinky. Yeah, okay. So it was. Yep. Uh, it was. Oh yeah, because she was. And again, the return of the Pinky, pinky sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Applejack was the one at the Death Hill with mm-hmm. her with the bus. string. True. Yeah, you have to consider though that I mean she used them back legs. I mean she can knock the apples from a tree, so she can probably stop a bus full of ponies from going yeah. down a hill. Yeah, true. And I'm mm-hmm. sure some physics major out there is trying to determine. All right, this is she. You know. Just how much force Applejack exerted doing stopping that cart. Well, with it the depends space on the fr- provided. It depends on the friction coefficient between hooves and grass. Well, you can't really experiment because it's an entirely different world. It's a question, not Earth. It could be rubber grass. Mm. It could be anything. Mm, chocolate grass. Mm. Dark matter grass. <laughs> So, uh, ponies. I also would like to th- uh, to welcome the two newest characters to the main six, which is Bucky McGillicuddy and Kicks McGee, uh, <laughs> the two hind legs of Applejack. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have to say that uh, that was an interesting statement by her. She's like, she's, she's named her back legs, her kicking legs. Well, she kind of Oh, would, come on, like she... we all haven't named some part of ourselves. It made um, me think I, of the Luna socks for some reason. Quite scary. I, I did think it was funny, though, that, I mean, apparently that's a callback to a Powerpuff Girls thing, where Bubbles, the green one, 
Maybe that's bubbles. I don't know. No, I never no, no, bubbles is blue. Blue Big Buttercup. Yeah, geez, Buttercup. get your card be right. I'm sorry. I never watched that show. Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, get off my show! No, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Apparently, like she names her fist something similar. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Go through some of the other pictures here. Let's see. What else? There's some all the Spider-Man references. There's yeah, plenty there. Right in the neighborhood, Rainbow Dash. Right in the neighborhood, Rainbow Dash. She he she saves people from a falling balcony. A la Spider-Man One. Well, then there was also the Batman Batman animated series style music during the chase scenes. Yeah, and yeah. the fact that the uh, um at the end was very similar to the Batman animated series original promo. Oh, really? I never noticed. Yeah, oh, good old BTAS. If you uh, look up the images, um, seriously, it's a straight throwback to Batman the Animated Series. Um, if I can just find an image. Oh yeah, the 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 banners that they were holding up. Yeah. The the Batman the Animated oh, yeah, Series. Oh yeah, I saw those on. Uh... There we go. Bam! There's the link. Oh, I, Yay, we get to see things. I'm going to have to make sure I link this. It's just the image on the right with the red oh. background and the oh, black yeah. silhouette. Yeah, totally. I was like, that's great. This is linked in the doc. Let's see. That way every uh, pony can see that. If they go over to bronyshow.com, they can check out the Google doc. I was supposed yeah. to a picture of it on uh, My Little Brony. There you go. Yeah, right. the, uh, I thought that was nice because I, I watched that show when I was a kid and the people that are watching the show now that have kids are going to recognize this and of course the fans that are just fans are like oh man I remember watching that and the logo and the music and yay <laughs> it was it was nice I liked it a lot okay so every, every pony ready for my uh, dig against chef right now huh? I would like uh, to suggest that uh, that uh, the um, the mayor duel is the best pony because it is every pony but Rainbow Dash. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, snap. Oh, snap. My world is ruined. <laughs> Bam. All right. Well, or is there a one? <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I think it was an okay episode. I said, I, yeah. I kind of I stated, it's it's one of those unflattering episodes like Apple Buck season. Where yeah. the other character has their thing that they're doing, but they either take it too far or they go too much, and they have to have the everyone else kind of set them straight, you know, yeah. kind of get everything, get them figured out. So you know, it, it's it's definitely it's it's two, it's one mildly unflattering and one unflattering mm-hmm. episode for Dash in a row. Yeah, uh, kind of leaving us to uh, to some Rainbow Dash fatigue. Well, to clarify and make up for it, uh, we're at the amount of like icons and implying faces we got from Rainbow Dash from the previous episode is absolutely brilliant. Implying? Implying? Yep. <laughs> Rainbow, en- enough rainbow glasses to fill us up for as long as we need. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the cat. actually, you know, now that I think about it, and now that I looked at the uh, the Wikipedia article, I like. Reruns of Batman the Animated Series are currently airing on the hub. <gasps> so that would be kind of funny if the kids, like, they saw the episode and they watch Batman the Animated Series later in the day and they're like, <gasps> and they get the connection. And if only they watched Darkwing Duck that they could, uh, do yeah. It. yeah. Wait, wait a second. I'm, 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 I'm making a correlation. Didn't Sipsy say she worked on Darkwing Duck? Yes, indeed. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, and we she did the show there, Sibsy. You're a crafty pony, we see. Yeah. Mm. So there there was many callbacks. I mean, Ponies, can, you know, continues to be a cartoon that recognizes its roots. Yep. Yeah. So, the things yeah, it's referencing. That's its episode. Next week, uh, just did a check, and it's going to be Sweet and Elite in the ninth episode. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a rarity episode so another yeah, going rarity. back to rarity back to rarity yeah. applejack still sitting there waiting for her episode i think yeah she really needs her episode just waiting for it to roll in let's see or just fluttershy needs an episode uh let's see i'm that'd be too cute 
Let's see. Hearth, uh, and here's the Christmas episode, which is the Hearth Swarming Eve that's going to be on December 17th. So, yeah, they've got mm-hmm. a, they've, we've got a lot rolling in. Um, Hearth Swarming Eve. Yep. Applejack, just waiting. Just trying to figure it out when it comes. All right. Well, that takes care of all of our, uh, all of that episode. It was good. It was all right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, it's a start. Keep, keep working in it. Well, yeah. we, we sure, we're sure, we're sure you could do it, Meriwether. Yes. She, 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 come on, mother. That she, she can do better. This is just a first, first episode. And, uh, let's hope that she's not another Dave Polsky. Let's move forward to emails. Moving forward to the magic of emails. Yes. She, you can send emails across to us at bronyville at gmail.com. We'll go in this in our usual order. Myself, uh, then Chef will go with, uh, Kenobi and then, uh, Equestria as the, uh, the next two, so that's the order we'll go ahead and roll on these. All right. I shall go first. Dear Apple Cider Chef Sandy and guests <laughs> or guests. Oh, they made it plural this time to be safe. I'm a new listener to your podcast and I've become a big fan of it. The way you guys are able to cover so many different sections of the fandom in each episode while also being able to add humor and professionalism is astounding and I'm glad that I found Bronyville. I just wanted to throw that out there. Anyways, I do have a question. As a writer, I've read quite a few fanfics since getting into the fandom and am currently working on one right now. What are your favorites? My personal picks are Past Sins and A Drop of Moonshine. Thanks for bringing such a great podcast to the fans of an equally amazing show. Keep up the good work. You guys rock. Your faithful listener, Jake Sato, a.k.a. Wordsworth, Wordy Note Right. P.S. I don't know if she's best pony, but Fluttershy is my favorite. Well, that's just your opinion, man, and we'll <laughs> respect their opinion. Oh, and I agree with your opinion. We'll tolerate it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Is re- reading fanfics favorite fanfics? Uh, mine is probably Paradise. I slay it. You <laughs> maybe, should finish it. Maybe it might just be Paradise. I've and heard about it a few I times. I rather like. Uh, I'm rather fond of a Butterscotch Sunday stuff. But as kosher as it is to mention that. Uh huh. Um, Perfect. it's not, it's not, no, uh, 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 sure, uh, sure, yeah, sure. I, uh, <laughs> I've seen your bookmarks, I am a pony of high morals and standards, I would never, <laughs> bookmarks, yes. uh, y'all are terrible, why we would are. you make, why would you say such thing? I like this episode where we can gang up on Chef, this is, this is nice. <laughs> I'm in a low like point, up on just Chef abusing episode. me, oh, <laughs> Lestia, why? Alright, so let's see, as for mine, uh, I like Allegoriza, that's a good one, uh, especially if you are a uh, big fan of, uh, I love vinyl scratch ones, uh, it's also an Octavia fic, uh, so I know that uh, Kenobi over there probably appreciates it. Um, Let's see the um, well, that was a uh, ED. Oh, ED. ED I'm likes. sorry, but I, you know I had a I had one out of two. I was trying to remember from the beginning. <laughs> um, as for let's see, what's another one? Um, it's a dangerous thing. Uh, going out dangerous your, thing walking out your front door. Right, walking out your front door. Good little one of the uh, first one of the first fix I read. That's just an amazing fix. Oh, it's good. It's if you like a nice adventure, it's a great way to go. Um, and especially if you want to see if. If you want to see something where Applejack can really just handle herself, yeah, that that's the one. Uh, the author but, made an interesting choice in just picking uh, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, and Applejack to mm-hmm. go on an adventure together. Yeah, and he really m- plays them off of each other perfectly. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I, I always suggest if you're not w- if you're not one that's interested in fanfic or not really interested in reading fanfic, I always suggest reading Sunny Skies All Day Long. Uh, because it's a real nice, quick, well-written uh, fic. Um, just it, it feels like an episode. It it just feels like a short, little, encapsulated, full episode with its own little morals and story to it as well. So I, I highly suggest that one. Uh, and I cannot ever uh, say it without saying Luna's uh, Goodwill Tour. It's just it, it. The first chapter looks enormous, but it's so well written and so fun and put together. Uh, this is even before the whole Luna, um, you know, coming down and saying hello. You know, it, 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 you have to kind of take it as its own continuity now because of the show, but it's still just a great story um, mm-hmm. uh, of her, you know, just getting to know everyone and trying to understand them. So uh, that I mean, would be my suggestion. So, what about you guys? What are what would you say? 
You want to go first, CD? Sure. Um, okay, I have two that are very close to one another. So, Progress is like one of the few comics I've laughed myself to death over. The one with Luna learning about everything, everything from a microwave to a baseball and everything. Um, also, vinyl scratch tapes are absolutely brilliant and really original style of uh, making a fanfic because usually fanfics are a telling story, whereas this is like a discussion that has been recorded. So I really enjoy those two a lot. Okay, and let's see, and Kenobi? Yeah, my favorite has to be Fallout Equestria. Oh, so long. It may be long, it may be longer than The Lord of the Rings, but it has been worth every hour I've spent reading it. Is it larger than The Lord of the Rings now? It's longer than The Lord of the Rings. Wow, that's incredible. You like to see ponies die, don't you? Well, no, it's not about that. No, it's, no. It's, it's start, the thing about Fallout Equestria is it starts as a simple crossover fic. And so you have the main character going on quests. It feels like a Fallout game. But then you start getting into this story that is obvious that K-Cat has planned out since the beginning. And now that she's most of the way through it, you can look back and she has brilliantly orchestrated this. I'm, I'm calling her she. I have no idea if he's a guy or a girl. I'm sorry, Cat, K-Cat, if you're a guy. Um, anywho, yes, he is... She... Uh, uh, <laughs> she's done an excellent job and it it just keeps me riveted and I and it's a strain to not read the new chapter as soon as it comes up <laughs> that's very uh, you know that's always been one just one I've been wanting to crack I think it's just at this point I have to know that it's like said and done I just feel mm -hmm. like all right I know it's there I could what? do one a week and in a year I could maybe have it done you know <laughs> <laughs> she tried the um, uh, audiobooks. The reader for that is very good. That could be that could be a, a, a potential on that. Be a lullaby. Like, hearing about like bonus mm -hmm. die. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's see. So we got that. All right. Moving on, uh, Sheffers, if you would. All right. My turn once again. <clears throat> Bonjour, Apple Cider, Chef Sandy, and guests. First, I want to say how much I love the podcast. It's always something fun to look forward to during midweek pony droughts. Keep up the good work. Secondly, I, after hearing you talk about them on the podcast, have decided to sign up for a local meetup group, which happens to be the Bronies of Northern California group. Woo! And I can't overstate how awesome it was. There's not much that can compare to eating a giant rack of ribs while listening to a room full of mostly male po people singing the My Little Pony theme song in public with pride. Okay. Uh, being that none of my close friends are into this show, it's also nice to be able to geek out about it with other people. I would highly recommend it to anyone, to anyone with a meetup group nearby to attend. And finally, I'd like to say I have photographic proof as to who the best pony is and who is best background pony. Behold! He sent us a link. All right, Your faithful see. listener, Donovan. Link if attachment fails. All right. It is Papercraft Derpy and Papercraft Applejack. Well, you can't you can't uh, disagree with that. They are in the flesh, paper flesh, paper they are, flesh. They are in the meat space, paper flesh. <laughs> paper crafts are astonishing. I mean, there's been some really great work, like people making them really, really detailed. Mm -hmm. Papercraft is insanely. Difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, I, tr I had started doing some Pokemon Papercraft way back when. No, that, that 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 was hard. If if you want to break your mind, go to the Papercrafts uh, the Papercraft site and just look at the Discord Papercraft. Oh, like oh, all the different oh. pieces to make Discord. Like it's incredible. They had to make two separate images and just like this goes first, then this, then you put this, then you add this here. It's it's just like so it is detailed. literally chaos. Yeah, it's it's it seems like it would be. It, it, but it comes with sunglasses. It does come with sunglasses. Does you cool. have the glass of chocolate milk that explodes? The half glass. Yeah. Oh, that, I love that scene. One of my favorites. She's like, hold on, wait a second, go back. Yeah. He drinks the glass. And then the milk explodes. Well, shouldn't it? It's the Lord of Chaos. There you go. Oh, it should. <laughs> The the drink should do anything that we would expect it not to do. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, Kenobi, you, would you mind next? <clears throat> no problem. Dear Apple Cider and that one guy. Oh, Just kidding. Oh, <laughs> snap. 
Just kidding, I know your name, Chef Sandy, I think. Oh. This is my first ever email to you guys, so I apologize if I do something wrong or something. No, keep it up. Anyways, right. to, wait, no, that's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Anyways, to kick off my email, Pinkie Pie is best pony, Rainbow Dash is worst pony. Oh, oh snap. Oh, this is harsh. Why is Rainbow Dash worst pony? She is because there's almost nothing in her personality to like besides loyalty, and I cannot find... And I can find almost zero fans who like her because of loyalty. Almost all of Rainbow Dash's fan base comes from the Sonic Rainboom and other things. I don't get why people would like a pony just for creating a giant rainbow. Pinkie Sorry. Pie is best pony for being optimistic and cheerful, and being able to cheer others up because of that. With that said, here's a question. What are some traits that you love in your favorite pony, and why do you like those traits? Design doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And no, I did not write this. Someone did entirely just murder you right now, didn't they? Oh, I didn't even hire this assassin. They came for free. <laughs> Next week on the Apple Cider Show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate It's okay, Chef. It's all in fun. And I totally didn't write this one. Uh, that's amazing. Um, Let's see. Why do you like your favorite character? Uh, all right, Twilight Sparkle. And I don't know, I like the fact that she is multifaceted. She can be a brainiac. She can wig out and can't figure out how to do stuff. She um, she has the habit of being extremely snarky. Uh, I love, and the number one thing that I love kind of the most is the fact that she lives in a library yet can never find anything in it. Also, she can go back to insane. Yes, she can do that too. Yes, she's like you, sweetie. She's exactly like you. <laughs> Smart and bat yeah. insane. So, there you go. God, you're ugly. All right, okay. Hey, Chef, why do you like that Rainbow Dash thing? I do like Rainbow Dash because of her loyalty. She's also a very athletic and skillful pony who can get things done when she's not letting her ego get in the way. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, it's because she's just colorful. Come on, it's color scheme. She's a pretty pony. Yeah. Cyan pony is prettiest pony. All right. Uh, let's see. Go ahead. Uh, let's go to um, uh, EQD, Equestria Dude. Uh, why do you like uh, Octavia so much? Just was, uh, just the color scheme and the regalness? N no. Well, yeah, obviously that. But since that doesn't count, the amount of fanon that has been gathered around her, making her a very careful and very very self oriented and very, very proudful pony really strikes me as like one of the only ponies you'll ever find in Ponyville that actually tries and act as mature as possible. Because as much as Rarity tries that, she doesn't really accomplish it as much as I think Octavia has managed to in all the fanon. And I know it can't really be counted, but it is fanon, and fanon is a huge part of an entire show. So I guess that's why. I just like really regal personalities, I think. I think I'm the only person who also likes Blue Blood. What? Get out Blue of here. Blue Blood's amazing. Get off this show. Blue Blood. <laughs> All right, no, that's fine. I mean, I like snails, as snips and snails, and I know some people that are just like, oh, I can't stand them. They're so dumb. And I'm like, yeah, but that's half the fun. I, I imagine that they're, exactly. they're these two guys that just think they're just... The just the most awesome thing ever, and they're just like, yeah, dude, what are we gonna do? I don't know. Let's just, you know, I I, I just have this whole like head fanon of them just thinking that they're the coolest things ever, and everyone around them just going like, what are those idiots doing? You know? Yeah, <laughs> that's the same. I have a blue blood. Like he's really self egoistic and stuff like that. But that's what I like. I sometimes I just like arrogant characters. So. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay, and uh, let's see. Uh, Kenobi, so why Fluttershy? Ugh, if it's not design, it has to be just the way... Uh, ugh, ooh, ah. <laughs> I really like her singing voice. I love the how when, it's when she starts singing, she just opens up as a com almost presents a completely different side of herself like during like um so many wonders she just woke opens up to all the animals in in and in the find a pet she opens up to rainbow dash and just shows a different side of herself they just Very, ha just has hmm? those different parts to her where once yeah. she once she comes out of her shell 
she has just these range of emotions, especially. Yeah. I find it especially funny when a ra- that range of emotion goes to anger, and it's just like, oh, oh. Yeah. Yes. Flutter, like rage flutter, flutter rage. In, in The Best Night Ever is like one of my favorite characters, personality ever as well. <laughs> All right, let's see. Go ahead and finish that one up, Kenobi. All right, like, P.S. I'm sorry if you haven't already answered something like that before. If so, here's another question. What's something you'd hate, what's something you hate or dislike about MLP from fluorescence? There's not enough of it. It's flooded by dudes. Oh, <laughs> bird. Oh. There's, there's a lot of dudes. Wrong because... podcast to say this. Wah, wah. <laughs> no, there's, there's plenty of female. Or, I mean, I, I have to say it's probably what... 60-40 male-female. Just like every I, venom I am in, it's dominated by male. Uh, yeah. Actually, ED, uh, they just posted a study on Equestria Daily earlier today. It was like 80-20, I think, actually. 80-20? Eh. Hey, it's not as bad as you... Go to any anime con. <laughs> Go to any anime con. <laughs> what? Yeah, 95-5. <laughs> I think what I dislike is, as I guess I don't can mention earlier, is stuff that is like grim dark. I really do not like like people just totally demolishing the light and colorful thing that is the MLP series uh, in fan fiction. I mean, I can accept like complicated things like there's that one uh, fanfic where Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy get stuck in the middle of nowhere in the sea. And they have to like travel together, and it actually gets quite brute for them. But besides, but then, it, but then when they fall, there's that fall of grace thing. You like yeah. you see you see Equestria as this like utopia, even though there's tanks and bullets and gu- 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 uh, guillotines. But we're not going to get into that. But then when you go into like a grim dark fix, something like something like Fallout Equestria, something like the End of Ponies, that fall from grace just really hits you. It's very powerful, and that's why people do it. Uh, yeah, but there's also all the dead ponies that comes along with that, and all the total pervertism over like everything. It, you know, like, just- I, I think I think that's a, that's a valid point there, where it, it is kind of the. There's one thing that I've always found kind of interesting about just culture in general is that we like we like to one we like to install icons. Two, we <laughs> like to just throw every terrible thing at those icons. Just to yeah. drag them back down to the mud, just to just to be completely crazy. And three, and this is the really good one, is when you those icons can drag themselves back out of the dirt and become icons again. You know, we, yeah. we just adore those three things. And uh. I mean, just just think about uh, the, just think about oh, the guy that does Iron Man now. Uh, just um, oh, what's his name? It's it's leaving on me. Come on, somebody's got it. I don't know. Nope. Oh my god, this is amazing. Um, but uh, okay, I've got to, I've got to pull that up. I'm, He's hot. Uh, <laughs> okay, so wait, you're screwed. talking about the Robert movie? Downey Jr. Uh, the okay. the Robert Downey oh, the Jr. Movies. where you I have you're talking about the writer. No, 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 just Robert Downey Jr. Where you have something that you have somebody that's good. He completely destroys himself and then brings him back up. Uh, brings himself back up and he becomes people. Idolize him even more for that. You really like people that does something good, then screws himself up and does something good again. Right. I just think it gets overused over time. I mean, past sins I kind of enjoy, um, but like, I think that's as far as I go. With grim, dark stuff with like all this major. Ma- I think it's because it's all the major stuff, like all the adult stuff that people throw into a innocent child thing that becomes too much for me. Yeah, it just it just it goes one way or the other. So, uh, let's see, uh, Chef, what do you dislike? I'm not a fan of the Grim Dark, um, and well, there's there's needs to be more pony. Ah, yeah, there you, you know. go. There's a it's the answer. fan conundrum of you know there, you have to wait a week for another episode, and it's like, is it going to be a good one? Is it going? Oh, it's not a good one, and then you need to wait another week for this, and you hope that one's good. There needs more characters, too, I think. Like we can use some more characters. But uh, I generally like ponies quite a lot, so... Okay. Anyone else with their likes-dislikes, or should we move onward? I think we're good. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, ED, if you would mind. Greetings. I'm emailing about Comic-Con. 
I know it's very far off, but we have some nice, elaborate full pony suits that are in, in the making and wanted to know if anyone was interested in some cosplay. Well, not cosplay for certain, but there are a few of us that will be dressing up in a full head to toe pony suits for Comic Con next year. It is never too early to plan, and we were curious if you knew or if you knew of anyone else talking or planning about it. Two of us are still torn on who to dress up as, and one friend is going as Rarity. Um, I personally, I'm per- I personally am planning on Fluttershy, the best pony, and another brony is thinking about Scootaloo. Any info would help. Preferably not, prefer- probably not much at this time. It's so early, but it's the great Lauren is there. We want a top-notch performance. Brony on. No name associated with this one. Uh, nope, there was not a name on the email. So uh, okay, uh, I don't know of any. Co- is is there any like cosplay community? Uh, there might be some stuff uh, you could check over on Pony Chan. There might be some uh, information there because Lord knows there's a lot of pony uh, that go- shows up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I would say that uh, most of the cosplay places are probably more anime related. I'm not aware of people that of. I'm sure there is a form out there for Western animation cosplay that might have some pony stuff, but I'm really not aware of anything. Yeah, Starry wants to throw up, maybe, or doesn't want to throw up. Uh, she wants to. She what? Wants, she wants to. Uh, <laughs> Starry Knight <laughs> wants to suggest Live Journal. Uh, there's a few cosplay communities there. Uh, if they may make you throw up or not, it's completely uh, independent. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't mind any. Like, I've never been much into the cosplay thing, but there are some really fantastic costumes out there. So, thumbs up to whomever did this email because some stuff can be really hard to pull off. I don't know if they're making it themselves or if they're getting someone to make it, but nevertheless, I have respect for people trying to cosplay up at something, especially when it's something like a pony, because that's hard to do. All right. Yeah. The extent of my cosplay is wearing a purple t-shirt with Twilight's cutie mark on their back shoulder. Uh, I have a cardboard box. (laughs) I get to make a cardboard box pony. Well, it could be derpy in a cardboard Mm. box, pretty much. What you do is you take the paper craft, make it gigantic, and put it on pieces of cardboard. (laughs) Yeah. That's stupendous. That's a a terribly (laughs) good idea. (laughs) It's so bad it might work. (laughs) Quickly. All right, so let's see. Let's move on. Uh, next one. <clears> hmm. <throat> Dear Chef Sandy and guest and AC, though they're not expe- explicitly addressed in this email. Oh, my. Oh, snap. I just listened to episode 30 and noticed your enjoyment of the puns with your name, although pun may not be really the correct word to use. Anyway, I thought a few suggestions for your esteemed colleague, Mr. Apple Cider which you may use at your discretion. <clears throat> Apple Cinder, ACDC, and Applelicious. Applelicious. Okay. Mm. Suggestive right there. Oh, Applelicious. <laughs> oh, oh Time Applelicious. To do a show. Uh, it's not a very extensive list, but maybe other listeners have some better suggestions. Kind regards, Neato Media, P.S. Apple Cider, looking forward to your next solo app. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> looking well, forward BS. to the next yeah. time that Chef isn't around. Yep. Because then you go completely crazy. Thomas Shefferson. I'm just using that one again. <laughs> that one's my favorite. I love my favorite too. All right, Chef, uh, <laughs> go ahead and hit the next one. Dear Apple Cider and Chef Sandy, I just wanted to voice my support for your strong standing in the Brony community. It is efforts like yours that can be a, such a strong uniting force among a populace that can be so easily divided. I applaud you for keeping up the hard work for more than half a year of podcasting. I look forward to much, much more. I must also say that I'm touched by the plight of the two dearest friends separated by a thousand plus miles. I myself, my Texas pony separated from a bro in the great Northwest. It took 10 months of planning, saving, and patience. We finally met face to face and had the time of our lives. Our friendship continues to grow in this very day, and I'm forever thankful for Friendship's Magic for giving me a renewed perspective on kindness and friendship. I had the time of my life, and I'm That's the whole right there. 
<laughs> I also like to thank you too for being that voice for the fan. And without you, my love for ponies wouldn't be nearly as strong. I have confidence that when you two meet up for the first time, it'll truly be something special. Best witches, the best best witches, <laughs> wishes the lone crow. Best yes, witches. Derpy is best pony. Rarity is best main six, and Philomena is best pet. That right there is right what the whole fandom is about. There is so many really great people out there in our fandom that you can't find anywhere else, really. Yeah, the Brony fandom has just been just is just such a friendly community. Like in all the other fandoms I've been part of, there's always like someone complaining about the fan. Like, like for example, I used to play Halo a lot in the Bungie community. Everyone hates the game, yet they play it all. It, it just seems that they hate the game. They're always complaining about everything that Bungie does. But no, that's not, that, that doesn't happen ne- nearly as much here in the Brony community. There's always such positive, like, reinforced, po- the p- positive encouragement going out to the guys that make the show. Love and toleration. Exactly. Silliness. Fun and silliness. I had a time of my life. All right. Sorry, I now, I now got that in my head. Uh, let's see. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Kenobi, hit our next one. Alrighty. Dear Chef Sandy, Apple Cider, and most likely, aw- most likely awesome guests. Well, thank you. Yeah, great. I am a thank huge you. fan of the podcast. It is one of the most original and hilarious podcasts on the web, brony or otherwise, and I would love to get your opinions on a few things that I have never really understood about MLP. First of all, I'm sure everyone has noticed the great difference between the number of female and male ponies. While Season 2 seems to have more males in the background, there are still way more females out there. So how does Equestria sustain its population? Is there a village with more males than females? Or or are all the males pimps with more than one relationship? (laughs) Also, I couldn't help but notice how Two-Faced the Noble Pony... How how Two-Faced the Noble Ponies were at the gala. First, they were singing along with the main six about how their dreams would come true, and most notably about how nice Nap- Applejack's food was, and yet she only sold a, sing- sold a single pie. Maybe the ponies are not as cute and cuddly as they look. Just a few little thoughts I had mulling around for a few days. Your faithful listener, Crispy Knight. Chirpy Knights. P.S. Rarity's best pony. P.P.S. Big Macintosh is best background pony. P.P.P.S. Chef Sandy is best Bronyville pony. This email is ended. <laughs> yeah. This email is silly. I believe that ponies are grown in like a laboratory deep beneath Candlelight Castle. It must be. It's the only reasonable explanation. In the wild, ponies are usually a group of bunch, like in the wild, wild horses, they're in herds and there's usually like a couple younger males and then there's the main male and mostly females. Usually only the main male gets to mate. Well, that is kind of horrendous to think about when they have a civilization going. Though it does make sense with a few of the uh, with the uh, Big Macintosh fix, so, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're not going to go there. Um, <laughs> Big, go Big there. Mac tries to turn off his swag some more. <laughs> well, yeah. sis, I gotta go into town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Every pony's oh, trying no. to be his villain. Big Mac has got a night on the town. Yep. Oh, boy. Yep. <laughs> Out last night, didn't stay late. Before home, I had a 19 date. Oh. Every pony is trying to be my filly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so needless That's to actually say, a Beatles song. I, I'm yeah. sure it is, and I'm sure you'll uh, <laughs> you'll do a cover of it. Um, I'm sure he's a they traveling the normal mammalian fashion, and they just don't show all the males. There we go. It is a little girl's cartoon with lots of female characters. And there are male, pa- male characters. <laughs> Repeat yourself. It's just a show. We really no, shouldn't I, be I concerning like ourselves with the re- ch- I like this idea well, of a child show, show all with all a harem. A child show with a harem. <laughs> there you animals go. mating on Discovery Channel and kids watch that. Uh, Thank you, Story Night, for bringing the, rational, uh, the rationalist point of view. Moving on. <laughs> hey, there's some five-star iTunes bronies. How about you read that, AC? Okay. Only if you promise to read the donators, because some of those names are going to trip me up. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do the five-star iTunes bronies. want to thank you all. We have 352 ratings currently on iTunes on the U.S. store. So much love goes to Will Johnson, Near Mellow, 
Vulpix, Barbarillo 11, Invinci Cowbot, Digital Syntax, Real Persona, Swan 2, 2, The Lone Crow, Scotty Boy, Roy G. Biv MLP, hey, I know that guy, uh, Steven Kleinberg, Kyenberg, Kyenberg, Cypress, Cypress Bender, Seamus I. Irving, the Ed- Edric Wolf, Michael Arnold, Mikey Hooves, and Ten Ten One Zach. All right, and we did receive quite a few donations on the mm. things from the last week. Uh, thank you very much for that, and uh, let's give them a heads up on the pins themselves. AC, let the people know. Yes, the uh, pins. Uh, just so every pony knows. Uh, go ahead, you can still donate for them. There's still plenty that are going to be left because we're going to be ordering 250 of all three buttons. And as said, you will get, if you donate to us, you get all three buttons. Um, we will send an email out at some point asking for your address. So keep an eye in and, you know, keep looking at your email and just, you know, make sure that you, uh, respond with your address once we have the buttons printed, which should be sometime in around December. And, uh, but yeah, we can, uh, uh, currently Pixel is just finishing up, uh, one particular, uh, commission that she's got. She's going to work on the buttons sometime very soon. And, uh, once I finally get some sketches and stuff, I'll drop that up for, uh, all of you to take a look at. But as said, all we're asking, this is money to get us to go around to do BronyCon, to send Chef over here for a secret interview with one Jason Thiessen. Uh, so we need your help just carting all of us around to these multiple locations to get you guys awesome interviews. So if you can donate, if you send 10 bucks to us, that'll help a ton. And we'll make sure that you get three of these awesome special limited edition Bronyville buttons that we're making. It's all very, uh, very special and secret. Shiny. Yep. Yep. All right. So the donators this week are... Are you sure we should read these? Oh, okay. Super awesome donators are Jeremy Seve, Matt Misfelt, Aaron Adelman, Michael Piscatelli, Michael Lanstra, Jared Watson, Richard Cannon, Rogelio Gonzalez, Craig Williams, George Salazar, Jesse Wallen, Nathaniel Mordu, Megan Celaya, Michelle Stover, Patrick Bullard, Philip Cozort, Natalie Ruiz, James Beach, <laughs> Cody Rodemacher, Christopher Atier, Bennington Owens, Ian Fitton, Aaron Ost, and Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Show that to Rodin right there. Yes. And, he uh, makes James better. He does. He's much better at words. I word good. That's why, that's why I need a co-host, because I don't word as well. You blah and blur. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So All right. that brings us to our final final thing our one cool thing for the week yes one cool thing where okay so we blathered on for a whole bunch we talked about a whole bunch of stuff so uh we really need to know what one cool thing should you look at this week what one thing should you go check out if you don't do anything else we told you and my one thing is going to be hey you should go check out that hubs naughty or nice contest because supposedly last year we completely dominated and this year we should too so you click on the link, it takes you to the Hub's Naughty or Nice contest right now. You can vote for Pinkie Pie, or you can vote for, vote for Discord on the uh, Discord on the Naughty, Pinkie on the Pie, Nice category. Uh, it's going to be a hard fight for a Discord since he's fighting against the Joker from Batman. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yep. <laughs> I know a few people were going like, oh, Q? Or the Joker, and I went. Hot thing, Q ver- Think of Q versus the Joker. Q totally wouldn't own that. I want to see a fight between Q and the Joker. No more Discord yeah. and his exploding Scotty. milk. You you just you just need more exploding milk. That sounds like yeah. Uh, so well, uh, Discord appears to be beating the Joker pretty soundly at the moment. Oh, I'm sure he would. It's it, it's on the hub. We do- <laughs> we we rule that place. <laughs> we with an iron fist. Yes. Or fact, we dominated last time, I'm sure we will. But go ahead and do that anyway. Let's make sure that we rule uh we rule the hub as usual. Yes, honey pie. Huh? What was that? Okay, chef, I've got to harass uh, Starry Night, so go ahead with yours. Okay. So uh my as I've said many times in the past, that I am a big fan of music within the pony community. 
And uh, this D-Notive guy has put out some interesting and good stuff as of late. I've listened to some of his stuff and thought it was pretty good. Um, he's been featured on Equestria Daily and uh, has, you know, doesn't have a lot of subscribers or channel views or upload views. So uh, let's change that around and uh, see what people think. I thought it was pretty good. Swarm is YouTube. Crash it. Crash YouTube. I don't think we can do that, AC. Let's do it. Let's find a way. All right, Magic. Pony. Magic. What do you got? And Pony stole mine, by the way. I was going to totally <laughs> use this. <laughs> well, see, so was I, I. I put it up as soon as I got the Google Doc, because I knew someone else was going to do it. Grr. All it's right. Derpy Loves Her Lava Lamp. Yay. From Parallax MLP. It's an awesome little flash animation of Derpy staring at a lava lamp. Both of her yes. eyes staring at the lava lamp. There's like two blobs, and her two eyes are following the two different blobs. It's adorable. It's everyone's <laughs> reaction when watching a lava lamp of just like, exactly. oh, pretty much. They're, they're gonna hit. They're gonna. <laughs> hey! oh! <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's just. It's every time. I That's, want that as a screensaver. Like they have that. it as a screensaver. Wait, where? Look, go, go to the website. Oh my it gosh. is a screensaver. <laughs> download that as a screensaver. I was Just make your stay. There you go. All right, so that's a, that one is a really cool thing. I would highly suggest that one. It's it, Even if you just watch it once, it's just watching Derpy's eyes move differently as she watches two, and then just... <gasps> and when the they wings. merge together, it's, it's completely that's adorable. Yep. Yeah. All right. Equestria dude, what we got? So, for anyone who is into anything anime related or not, it actually doesn't matter. There's this really great impersonation of the Bleach anime intro called Peach, where they, it's a really great animation done where they try to complete it as close as possible to the very first intro that was of that anime. It's a really great animation done, and it's totally worth checking out. There you go. All right, that sounds good. And that will t conclude with our one cool things, which unfortunately means that concludes our episode this week. Oh, <laughs> it's over. Only Starry Night is happy. So you can go party hard and or stuff. Or Dovakin or whatever. Or read Scootasad. <laughs> delicious. More Scootasad. All right, well, first off, I want to go ahead and thank our two guests. It is great to have you guys on uh, just to talk about yeah. your stuff and talk about episode and give, you know, all of your suggestions and fun stuff. So cool to have you. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's been it's awesome. Great. Yeah, absolutely amazing. All right, and all of a sudden, Starry Night is typing the document. This is Starry Night. Hi. Uh, Hi. Hello. And she makes a face. All right, so that's Starry Night's contribution to the show, everyone. Let everyone on the internet give her a hand. She's helping. Uh, let's see. I am helping. Yes, you are. Okay. She pulls all the strings. Yes. All right. That's. Yeah. I'm not reading anymore. So uh, what I would. So um, also, I want to thank. I am best pony. No, you're not, sweetie. Okay. So. Uh, I keep thinking that. So I'd also like to thank Chef. Uh, thank you once again for bringing the thunder. I do my best. You were almost more observant on the episode th on the uh, Google Doc this week than you were last week. Yay! I'm <laughs> helping. And, and get over get over all that uh, that uh, you know all the hurt that you got. Don't worry. There's not going to be any uh, as much uh, Rainbow Dash hate next episode. Or will there? It's dependent on your emails, which you can send across at, at bronyville at gmail.com. So you can send pro or anti Rainbow Dash mails. I will only read. Very well, fluid done right there. Half of those mails will get deleted. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, if you want to go ahead and check out our webpage, you can do that over at bronyshow.com. Uh, please, if you want us to say your name on the air, you can do that and, uh, Leave us an iTunes review. Just go up there. We've already got so many, but we got to catch up with all those other ones, like This American Life or something, you know, that have so many thousands. So uh, please go ahead and leave us a review. If you want to go ahead and get those buttons, leave us a $10 donation, and we'll get you some buttons. You can do that on bronyshow.com. Uh, we do have a Google Plus page again. You can join us. Just look for Bronyville Podcast, uh, and you can join on that and uh, do that. Uh, and we also have the Twitter. My Twitter is Bronyville. 
My name is Chef Sandy. There you go. And uh, I think that'll go ahead and do it. I want to thank every pony for listening and <gasps> sleep well, every pony. Adios. Bye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be a holiday. Oh, look at all.